uh, hold on. Uh, just going to copy, save the into the chat. The um, can I do that? Put, put yeah. the whole yeah. yeah. So where is the chat? I can't find it. Some oh, there is chat. Okay, so there's chat. Let's see if I can't copy Docker PowerPoint X. You can sort of uh oh. Do, oh, do I have to? There might be a size limit. How big is the file? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it is. No, it's only a couple of hundred k. Oh, that should be fine, I think. So, what do you do? Just drag and drop, or <laughs> you should be able to drag it straight onto the chat box. Okay. Wait. No. Um, type a new message. Maybe I can cut and paste. Let's try that. Uh, copy. Copy, copy, copy. And paste. <laughs> I'm doing very well here, are we? Please type a message. No. Ah. Um, well, this is awkward because I do want people to have, have this. Um, if you if you think it's important, the workaround is you could email it to me and I could email it out to the Herrig list. OK, yeah, let, let me, I think it is important to people to because yeah. there's a lot of links in it that are very relevant. So let me just quickly do that. So uh, yeah, cool. to add Harris, Docker. And. Touch. Yeah. Okay, did that come? Not yet, but I'll I'll there it goes. It's there. Okay. All right. And in the meantime, I'm going to start sharing my screen and, and open that up. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can um, do it the normal way. Yeah, see if you can drop it into the chat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not letting me. That's weird. Yeah. Okay, then. So, oops, let's minimize that. Uh, right, so um, so Doc has been around for quite a while now, and I did uh, visit it probably five years ago, and and pretty much gave up. To be quite honest, it was a lot of problems, and I've, and the Achilles uh, or the straw that broke the camel back was when it completely filled my hard drive with stuff that I wasn't aware was happening. So uh, I'll come to that in a in a while. Uh, oh, oh no, here we go. So. Uh, OK, so. Yeah, so. How do I get a oh, minimum, I guess? Yeah, there we go. So it's a lot of similarities to Git, and in fact, you can use the two together and people often do. Uh, so I'm going to quickly go through Git. Most people will have used it. If you've done anything with it, you've downloaded a Git, uh, a Git repo at some point or better still clone a git repo so that you can work on it and push your changes back um, now the difference with git repo is it's just a bunch of files and the, the intention of git is that the files would be source files for a computer code uh, you know like c source code or whatever and uh, somebody would clone the repository and then build uh, within their integrated development environment um, they would compile the code, then they would have an executable and maybe a few data files and things, and it would run. Uh, and a perfect example for this um, is uh, DSAT. So DSAT are, have got their own Git repository. And sure enough, what this is, it's um, it's got all the uh, Fortran code in it. You'll see all the dot four things. It's got uh, uh, well, yeah, this it's, it's an absolutely typical layout of, of a Git thing. So you've got your readme. It explains hey, what's not, going on. You know, we can't see something happening oh. with your share. We can't see Oh, your great. Oh, sorry. I was, you were watching what I was doing. Uh, let me share again then. 
Uh, share screen. OK, so did you, I guess you didn't see the first page of the. Um... No, I don't <laughs> think so. OK, so now can I get back to. Hmm. OK, so yeah, so this is I, basically it's just what I was saying. I was explaining about Git, how you sort of push and pull down, you know, from the cloud onto your um, onto your your host. Uh, and you can, the good thing about Git, of course, is it does version control seamlessly, which is very nice. Uh, but when when you uh, you can take a project and you can take that project in a different direction, add new stuff on. When you do that, it then becomes a fork. It's not a branch; it's a fork. Uh, the thing with a so the thing with a a branch is that typically somebody who's working um on on fixing one part of this would start a new branch make some changes then the whole thing would merge back together into a, a whole and there should, ideally wouldn't be any branches um if you wanted to take the project and go somewhere else you can see that 135 people have used this as the basis of uh work that they're going to do and never re you know put it backwards you know backwards into this so uh, typical thing with a GitHub, you've got the README explains what's going on, the directory structure, compiling the code. So this is absolutely a true, true GitHub, and it tells you how to how to do it. And this is something you'll see on almost every repo you ever go to that is of this sort. And these are the instructions you would type at uh, at the command line, and it would. It would build uh, build an application, and um, one thing that's missing off there is if the application also had libraries, the last thing would be make install, and then you would install the libraries into your system, as well as uh, creating a um, an application that you can run. So let's go back. So starting from thinking about Docker. Um, the sim is similar to uh, Git in, in that it's all about applications. The idea is that instead of downloading, and you do download, you, you would download uh, an application from a repository in a very similar way. Uh, but the difference is that the intention is just to run the application. Uh, it's it's like you know it, it, it be, somebody's made it probably you've made it yourself but somebody's made an application that's in a container you download it and you run it and that's that, that's the ideal situation and uh, of course if you're the developer you also need to know how to build um, applications and put them into images well that's that's beyond the scope of what we're going to do today although there are tutorials that you know if you want to try that you can can do it so the concept and uh, yeah, I apologize for the for the analogy but I, I struggled with this there's only two parts to, to docker and I really struggled between what the difference was between an image and a container so this is what I came up with which is that um you know, if you think of the image as um, you know, a picture of a plate of food on a restaurant window, any number of people can come past, point to that without having to be very clever about programming or anything. And so I want that. That's what I want. And, uh, you know, the chef or docker makes that happen, delivers delivers your application on a plate. Um, and there are lots of plates available. So, so the restaurant window at Docker Hub might look something like this and you'll see that this is one to 25 of 10,000 available results well there aren't exactly 10,000 available is obviously more than that and that's that's when they stopped counting and you can um, you can scroll through some of them are approved by docker themselves that means that, you know they're absolutely going to work without any issue at all and you can go through and you see use, useful things. Um, maybe you want to do some, <laughs> yeah, maybe you want to do some uh, Ubuntu stuff on your Windows machine. Maybe you haven't got Python installed and you just want to run a Python file. Well, Docker is, is most certainly your friend in that respect. Uh, and of course, you can search to see uh, it's, it's a public. Uh, it's just like GitHub. You can have a public repository or a private one. If you want private ones, you have to pay. So um, you'll find a lot of 
public stuff up here, for example, DSSAT, and there's a DSAT Docker. So somebody's gone to the trouble of building all of that. Uh, all we would have to do is, uh, is run it on our system once we've installed Docker. Right. So that was Docker. Uh, right, so what I'm going to do now, so so yeah, so images are the um, are the bit that you can't you can't stick it on a memory stick and swap an image with somebody and then they run it. It has to it was so you can build it on your machine and you can push it up to the repository and then somebody else can pull it from the repository and, and run it. Uh, so image is the first uh, structure, if you like. And when you run an image, you then the instantiation uh, instantiation of that image is a container. And uh, you can do it many times on the same machine, and that's where the confusion comes in, actually. Um, so let's let's uh, let's just do that. Let's let's take a moment out to. Not sure how to. I'm going to have to go escape. Uh, take a moment out to run. Uh, okay, I'll just start from scratch so it's very clear what's going on. So I'm hoping everybody's used the command prompt in Windows. This would be your terminal in Linux, works in exactly the same way. And you would just, um, you would type this command. You would type Docker. And if you want some help on Docker, you can just type Docker itself. And you get the usual stuff explaining what all the commands are. Uh, the command that's easiest to use of all is run. and I could pull, I could pull an image down and then once the image is down, I could then run it or I can just run it. And if I haven't got it already, then it will pull it. So let's run uh, interactively. Py oh, just before I start, just to prove something to you, I haven't got Python on this. Well, I've got it in Anaconda, but I haven't got Python available to the to the system. So if I do Docker. Run interactively i think that's what that means uh python what will happen is it looks for an image on my thing i haven't got one so it's now downloading it from docker hub and it's done it it's launched it there's my python prompt two plus two is four so it's that easy to run run something i'm just going to get out of this uh, and what and what I've actually done there, and uh, well, I'll run another one. Uh, so let's do um, Docker. Hey, can I ask a question? Mm, about oh, that? please jump in with questions all uh, the time. Yeah. Did when you have you installed Docker locally to be able to do that? Yes. Yeah, I'm coming. It's I've done it sort of a little bit about face. Um, and a couple of slides we'll talk about how to install it. OK, but yes, it's installed Docker. You install Docker on your machine in the same way that you install GitHub desktop. And then Just, and then when you uh, ran, did it run an image you had already downloaded? Or no, it, it downloaded it. You saw ah, that happen in real time. Ah, OK, that yeah. was fast. Yeah, yeah. So okay, interesting. Uh, Docker run uh, Ubuntu. I may have run this before and this one may actually be here. Um, yeah, you can see at the top here it said unable to find image uh, Python Python latest locally, so it went ahead and pulled it from uh, from so Ubuntu. So run minus it uh, Ubuntu. That's because we like Linux, and uh, obviously this is a Windows computer. Again, I haven't got Ubuntu, so it's downloaded it. Now I've got Ubuntu, so I'm at an Ubuntu prompt. So, if, for example, I did ls. Very familiar. I'm in the home directory, and oh, actually, I'm not in the home directory. Am I? Uh, I'm in the root directory. Oh, yeah, it says right there on the prompt. I'm in the root directory. Uh, but if I were to, um, let's say, I wanted to text, do a text edit with nano. That's just like a little text editor. It's going to say, 
it doesn't exist. I haven't got that installed in this version of Ubuntu that I just downloaded. I've downloaded a very minimal version of Ubuntu, absolutely bare bones. Uh, so what I can do is I can uh, I can install it. I could do apt install nano. And it's going to complain again when it says it's no installation candidate. What that means is uh, the apt um, locations haven't been installed. So if anybody's used Linux, they'll be very familiar with what I'm just about to do, which is uh, apt update. And what that does, it looks to see what all the packages that are available for this version of Ubuntu, which I'm not sure which version it is actually. So I've done that. So now I can do ap, or oh, in fact I can use the up thing just like in a normal thing, install nano. I've installed nano, so now I can go nano uh, mat.txt. I'm in the editor within Ubuntu and I can say hi Harog. Oops, oh well, good enough. Uh, control X, yes. Huh. And now if I do ls, Matt.txt. So I've I've changed the I've within the container I've made changes. Now if I were to launch Ubuntu again, so if I uh, and this is the it, it, I'm not, sorry I'm laboring this point, but it's it's very important. Uh, so if I if I make myself another plate of Ubuntu by typing uh, Docker run my it ubuntu this time you'll see it won't down it's already downloaded the image so it should start extremely quickly there we go uh, but if i do ls you'll see that uh, there's no mat.txt and there's no nano because i'm running two completely independent versions uh, and uh, yeah there's, <laughs> and that that's kind of a big problem well it's, it's not a problem it's it's um it's what makes working with containers a little bit less fun than it might otherwise be so what can we do uh let's have a quick look so sure i want to right so so i'm going to exit uh exit that i want to and show you a couple of Docker commands to, so that you can see what's going on. So D O C K E R, and I'm going to look at my images first. Uh, Docker image list, and what we'll see in here, uh, oh, you'll see some <laughs> a little preview of stuff that's coming later. But um, there you look at Python and uh, Ubuntu. There's only one Ubuntu image. But if I show you the containers, uh, uh, Docker container list, I do minus all. You'll see that there's two Ubuntu's here, one of which the first one I started four minutes ago, and the and the the one that I just exited by typing. Control C uh, by by typing exit, but the container still exists, uh, and it could be restarted. But of course, if you every time you want to run Ubuntu, you just jump on. You say right, run Ubuntu, run Ubuntu, run Ubuntu. You fill your computer up with these with these containers, and it can be uh, can be a problem. So th the other thing is now, if I want to, if I if I'm really keen on my um, my version of Ubuntu that's got mat.txt in it and nano, what I can do is I can create another image from the container, work backwards as it were. Uh, I'm going to need to look up the command for that on, on here. Uh, is it that one? Is it that one? That one. So what I'll do in this case, control C. is oops 
um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit right example container is the container that I want to want to commit and here's the bit that used to be very off-putting about docker is you would just always work with it with with ids so the one i'm interested in is this one which is still running so i'm copying this and i'm pasting this in here so that's the i want to commit that and i want to commit it to uh, a new image called let's call it Arug. Okay, so now if, if it does that, so it gives me a new number. If I now redo the uh, list of images, you see I've now got one called Harug image, which I can launch uh, by typing Docker run minus it. Harug image. OK, so it's running. I can do LS. Sure enough, there's mat.txt, but I have to be careful here because that's a different mat.txt to that mat.txt, if you see what I mean. They're still independent containers, but at least I found a way to save the changes I've made to the container. Right. Uh, so let me go. Back to here. Right, so so every time an image is run, new container is created. Yeah, we've just done that. We've we've made a copy of it. Uh, and I could I could now push that to um hubdocker.com. So up here, this is one I prepared earlier. Uh, it was getting started. So here I'm looking at my own uh, images, and here here is where I was exploring everybody else's images. So so yeah, you just you just push it. And this, it, once you get Docker on your machine, if you went uh, on in your command line, you said Docker run minus it um, on the sofa, getting started. You you would run. The image I just just created. That's how you, that's how you share the images. Right. So, uh, yes, that's how you share it. Right. This is the this is the dream. All that horrible stuff on the command line. I can imagine most people are switching off at this point. There is an easier way. So here we are. It's Docker Desktop, and the two things in the top are images it's so it's the same stuff we saw from the control line there's um there's harrog image look that i just created it says that it's in use and it's in use by uh one of these containers here and we can we can very conveniently do things from here like for example if i look in the container i can see it's just it's just got a log of all the different stuff that's gone on uh, I can I can open another terminal into it from this desktop here, ls, same thing, and I can look at the files. So in here, somewhere I created mat.txt. There, I look. It says that it's been added, so it's showing you what all the all the different changes are. And if I get a double click, there we go. So that's hi Harrog. Uh, right. So <laughs> it's all very well showing this. Um, GitHub desktop, but the bad news is, <laughs> the bad news is um, the, the install. Oh my God. So there's a lot of system requirements. Uh, there's two different ways it can work on Windows. It can work with a WSL2 backend. I have never managed, I, I've managed to get this working at home, but not on this computer. So I've tried this on four Windows machines. There's three here in the lab and one at home. Of the um, four machines, one's worked perfectly, just like uh, basically following these instructions, clicking install, it went to breeze. 
the one I'm demonstrating to it to you on now is a Harper apt laptop, which I do have admin rights to. And I was able to install Docker, but then right at the final moment, I wasn't able to use Docker because every time I launched it, it complained that my local user wasn't in the uh, Docker user group. So I had to have IT. Uh, they didn't. I didn't have to take my laptop to them. They came in remotely and they just added me to the Docker user group. And as you can see, it's working and it's working fine. The other laptop I've got is um, Windows was uh, too old a version. They're very, uh, very keen that you have particular versions of Windows. And uh, on the on the last one, everything installed fine. And then when I went to run it, it wouldn't run because there, it wasn't enough uh, RAM. So. <laughs> your your mileage may vary. Uh, I'm going to say that if you try and install it on a Harper laptop, you might be struggling. I also uh, went to install it on Ubuntu, um, uh, you know, native Ubuntu on another laptop, and the Docker engine, that is the command line, installed perfectly. You literally just type apt install Docker, job done. Um, and you, there's also a version of desktop for Ubuntu, but guess what? It's only for a specific version, uh, the latest version, 2204, I think it is. Um, so yeah, so you can come to this page. That's why I wanted to give you the link in the in the PowerPoint. And my suggestion is that what you do, rather than read through all of this and panic, is is just <laughs> just click the click the installer and run the installer. Because actually, what I found was all a lot of these instructions where it tells you to you know, go and change your stuff, you know, do all these pros. It actually does it automatically anyway. So just just have a go. Just uh, click that and um, and see what happens. What was your experience at this point, um, Harry? Yeah, it wasn't a problem at this point at all. I got it. Oh. Done. Yeah, yeah, got it all sorted. I think I did some other things. I can't remember. I think I Downloaded was it uh, Visual Studio Code as well and sort of ran stuff through there. Ah, is that because you started running the tutorial? Mm, no, I kind of cheated and went straight to YouTube to be completely. Oh, honest. okay. Ah, oh, well, I'll, I'll show you. That, I mean, once you've got the once you've got to the point where you can type Docker on your command line and something happens, you you're pretty much good to go. Especially if you can launch um, desktop for Windows and. Uh, but the problem is with the tutorial is it's aimed. They've got the audience. Well, I was going to say they've got the audience wrong, but they've done it for people who are already writing applications and deploying them. You know, they're, they're sort of starting assuming you know all about doing that. And that one of the first things they tell you to do is they, they say, oh, download this um, application and then uh, put, it, you know, put it into your Visual Studio and change line 56 to this. And it's a Node.js system. But all of that's unnecessary. It, I, I think, and what I've tried to do in the tutorial today is start from the other end. Just bring, bring you know, let's get, uh, let's get useful um images that do pretty much what we want and find out how to run them and actually use them uh, and then you can you can move on to building your own images and deploying and sharing and and so on so that that's that's the plan that's where we plan to go with this so um but yeah this is it have a go it might you know might very well install just fine so harry if you launch your command and window you know little black window and type docker does it work does something happen? Yeah. 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 Okay, you're good to go. So the so the next bits will be really uh, relevant for you then. Um, pause. Where are we? Shift function F5. Uh, because you can. The, the, here here are the whoops, here are the tutorials, and they're they're pretty good. They are pretty good. Uh, so I'll open it up. And. What it does, it's got, it gives you two options. One is if you've got desk, a Docker desktop and been successful, uh, you can literally just type, copy that. I mean, it'd be interesting if you could try this, uh, Harry. If you paste that into your Docker, in fact, I'll do it now. I'll show you exactly what it, I, was, I was hoping you could do. So I'm, I'm copying that. I'm going straight into, um, I'll start a brand new command window. 
CMD. Uh, uh, right click. OK, so what this is going to do, getting started, I'm pretty sure I've already got that image. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, sure enough. So that's now running and you might think, well. Great, what's it doing? <laughs> um, and, and this again, this is part of the problem. But if, if I go to my. Uh, well, I mean, if I go to here, it will tell me what to do. It says point your browser at localhost and certainly I can do that, but I'll just show you in. Uh, Uh, in Docker desktop, so we should now have a container running uh, called getting started. Here we go, 33 seconds ago. And what this is showing us, see where it says ports. This is the way to access this particular container. And it's telling me if I were to click on that, and that's just a hyperlink, it's going to launch, uh, launch my browser on localhost. Look, and there we go. And then, then it talks you through all of the um, all of the stuff, or most of the stuff I've just been showing you talks about what a container is, uh, images. Uh, it does let you download an application, <laughs> but here it is. That's the application. Well, that's the application, but they go straight in with having you download source files, editing them in Visual Studio, building your own image, uh, and then then finally 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 running them and uh, so th this image is actually running on my uh, computer at the moment and as you can see it's it's the uh, my host port 3000 is linked to the applications port 3000 so I think it's up here somewhere running uh, but if not I can just uh, I can just go to it again so I'll go to localhost port Three, one, two, three. And there we go. That's the there's a container running this little web thing, which is just a list of uh, list of list of items. And that's it. Um, so so yeah, so that's uh, that's one way to run the. Uh, tutorial, the other way to run the tutorial which is, um, you know, if you, if you are put off by installing anything, you can actually just, there's a little online version of uh, Docker, just it's a bit like, I suppose, um, well, it's just like all, a lot of these places that we go, but you do need to log in, you need to create yourself an account. And then you've got, oh, uh, add a new instance. Boom, there we are. So I've got my own little computer here, uh, which has already got this is working in the cloud. As you can see, uh, so I could type all of those. You know, commands that I've been typing in my lo local, my local machine, uh, I can I can try it out in the cloud um, without having to install anything, anything at all. So that's fun. Uh, right. Let me come back. Shift. This is where it's going to get a bit more exciting. So um, we've already discovered this. The containers run in isolation. That's very secure. Uh, how do we share with them? Well, or yeah, you know, share data. So we we do we have shared folders, much as you might have shared folders over a network and um, exposing network ports. So as you just saw, the I've got two containers running now on my local host. One of them is running that tutorial on port 80 and the other's running the little to do list on port 3000. Uh, one place that has got some dockers for us is. Uh, Our studio. So. Um, if you want to run our studio in Docker, you can absolutely do that. Make sure you've got Docker installed. Obviously, you can run just R. I'm not sure how that would work or what you would do, uh, but look, I can just take take this. Uh, I'll just copy it. In fact, copy that. And. 
we, we we should already be getting a feeling to think, oh, that's funny. There's a there's a port here. This is the interface to this is going to be through my browser again. Look on port eight seven eight seven. So let's let's bring up a let's bring up another command window. See and date and paste this in. Uh, OK, you can see that my password is going to be your password, so let's let's just quickly change that to. Rug. And run. OK. Oh, so it's running because I've run it already. I've already got the image, so it's just run really, really quickly. And. Uh, I go to my browser. No, eight seven eight seven local host eighty seven eight seven boom sign into our studio harug and I've got our studio and I think this is probably the same R studio that you get if you go there's an online version isn't there um, so yeah here we go it's a proper thing I'll show you um, all, all the other versions that are available but we've got the same problem here so if I start a new file or no sorry a new R script uh, and just type hello I know that's not very good R code and then save it, it says where shall I save it well let's make a new folder uh, called test okay and call the file right OK, well, here it is. It's all it's all great, but I don't think anybody would be surprised by now when I tell you that when I close this container, this will be gone. And the other problem is I can't if I click home to try and open a or try to open some data, I just I just can't do it. There's no. There's no way to open file that I'm here. I can't <laughs> I can't get onto my host. So that's an issue. So how do we solve that problem? It's not it's not difficult. It's uh, it's a well known solution. And what what you actually do uh, is you create uh, volumes or shared shared folders. So here um, in temp, I've already done this. So how to run our studio. Uh, and, and what I've done here, I've added in uh, a, a new switch which says create a volume. Uh, which maps my hosts file, which so I've got one called C temp workspace, to uh, a folder called host folder in in uh, in the running thing. So if I copy this now, I'm going to go Control C. Uh, I'll go back to this, uh, which is the one that's running. Okay, I'm going to go Control C. That should be finished now. OK, and if I now go to this and. Well, it's gone, the uh, that that um, R studio is gone. But I can start a new one just like this. This time, though, you'll see something's different. Uh, a couple of things are different. First of all, I haven't put a password in. So it's going to give me a password to use, which is going to be unique every time. And then I'll go here. Local host um, 8787. There's my R Studio. This time the password was something funky. But the difference here is I've now got a mapped folder, host folder, and in it is something called win, and in that is a uh, is an R thing. And here's where it is, look. So I've mapped workspace and there's win and there's the R. So this is how you can get files in and out of uh, in and out of your containers. And indeed, containers can talk to one another as well. It's, uh, it's, it's not at all unusual to have lots of applications running together. So Matt, I have another question. At this mm. If um, if you share a folder and then you can access it within um, a live image. Can you then save save that image, and will it have 
will it have that data you you uh, shared or does it require access to the shared folder on the local system? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think by doing this, what I've done is um, I've I've, I've created a link to yeah, whenever this container starts, it's going to look to that folder on my host. That doesn't mean I can't create more local folders mm. within this and then uh, potentially save the container. But I think I think I know what why you're asking that. And I'm going to show you an example of how somebody else has, has solved that problem. OK, uh, yeah, so I'll just carry on a bit. Um, Right. So, so yeah. So in that, in that, we just looked at running our studio. Uh, it provided a UI through the port, and it uh, we we mapped a drive effectively. So, what what are the the problems? All these options at the command line can get very tiresome. Um, but uh, what, there's a couple of ways around it. One thing is uh, I could have run that from Docker desktop. And in fact, that might be the way to go in future. So if I'd gone to images, Rocker Studio, uh, the, the, look, some of these are actually quite big. Look, and if that one's uh, 1.87 gig and run it, it's got some optional settings. And these are basically the things that I was just um, doing from the command line so I could choose a folder to map and tell it where to put it uh, and I could choose to use a different port so um, yeah and, and and the only reason I would do that is if another container was already using port 8787 so so there's you know the, so docker desktop is is to Docker what Windows is to MS DOS command really, and and same with GitHub and GitHub, and, uh, sorry Git and GitHub desktop. Um, right, so let's just move on to uh, oh yeah, so the last one, so an actual uh, working way to do this. Shift F five. OK, so I'm imagining you're you're probably Ed and Shivit thinking, oh, it'd be nice to be at RStudio and DSAT and a, a web interface. Well, what you can do, you can either the architecture is um, it's really up to you. You could have three separate containers that all got their own individual job and talk to each other through shared spaces and ports, or you can build a container you start with a sort of base image and I don't quite understand that, you know, I'm probably flanneling a little bit, but I, I do know that within containers are you start with a base image and then you build up uh, with all sort, you know, adding functionality, functionality, a bit like forking, you know, and then forking again and forking again and until you've got the complete application that you want. And the first time I encountered uh, containers was indeed with Jetsons. When I first ever got a Jetson and started playing with it, uh, I saw that there was an option to um, use Docker containers instead of building all of the projects, which is what the other option is. So I sort of worked my way through this and it all looked pretty scary. It looks a little bit less scary now, but um, what's really interesting here is that all of the projects for uh, the um, Jetson Inference are in a GitHub. So you clone the GitHub, and then within the root of the files that come down, so on your local machine, you've just got a folder, and it's got you know a, a structure with lots of subfolders. Uh, but right at the uh, in within the Jetson Inference folder. Um, you you move you move yourself in there and there's a, a, a bash script called run.sh uh, and what run.sh does is it configures all of the uh, let me show you it configures all of the uh, data volumes for example so 
I mean, it's it's here. You can you can read it for yourself. So instead of just having one folder, it's got folders for models and data and you know training and and so on. So the what they've done is they've made it a sort of a one stop shop where you you clone the repository and then you run a script and the script uh, downloads uh, the container. Uh, builds all of the paths and links and everything, and and then it just runs. And once you once you're running, you're you're dropped at a, a command line, which is just you know a, a regular command line. You don't know that you're in a container, but you you are working within a container. And um, when when you access files and save your models and that sort of thing they go to the map drives and the reason i stopped using docker was because i i didn't understand the persistence problem but particularly because they had solved the problem with data coming in and out but when i went in and changed the python uh scripts to do what i wanted it to do instead of just be the standard demonstration ones of course it all worked great and and then of course the next thing I would do is I would close it down, open it up, hit run again, and of course, just like in the examples I've been giving, it had all gone, all my work had gone. Um, so yeah, I, I now know that I could have um, yeah rebuilt, I could have built an image based on uh, the container I was running, and you know, and and so on and so on, but. Um, yeah, <laughs> so, but what I ended up doing uh, was I just chose this option instead, building from source, uh, because you, you literally just type these commands one after the other at the command line and everything everything just works. And well, it does take um, an hour or so to do all of this uh, building of the, you know, from the source code, building all the, all the executables and in particular the... Um, What's it got in there? The uh, high torch and everything. It has to download that, and it, yeah. So, yeah. So th there you are. There, there's, uh, um, th there it is in a nutshell. So my my suggestion would be, if you want to experiment with it, have a look on the PowerPoint and uh, follow the links uh, to the to the tutorial. I'm just trying to work out now how to stop sharing my screen. Um, I'm sure there's a way. There's that oh, one right, the <laughs> share button on the upper right if you're looking at something similar to me. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, there we go. OK, I've got it now. Stop sharing. Oh, there we go. OK, well, thanks, Matt. That was really interesting. Um, I wonder if there's a, um, a GUI for like the Docker desktop, I'll definitely check that out. A GUI that allows you to um, to build your your container in the first place. Oh, well, that's interesting. I mean, you, the, 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 there's lots of examples of building. You basically, with a to build a container, you have a thing called a Docker file, and um, you run that. The, the, it's important where you run it from because what you tell it to do is is copy you know the files from the current container uh, folder for example um and you set some things in like you know what how the how the container should behave when it's ex you know when you start it so some of the like that our studio container when it started in the command window you can see it sat there you know logging out any errors and so on um and when you close that container it actually deleted the container Whereas some of the other ones, when you close the container, the container is still there, but um, just uh, just idle. And then you can actually reattach to the container. That's one of the things Docker do, can do. Um, but yeah, you have got the. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm assuming you can see my screen. Of course you can't. There is. Um, there's a. Yeah, the, there's a dev environments thing within Docker and. Um, a, a thing for creating containers. Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, they've got it covered, but it's all aimed at developers. That's the only caveat. Yeah. 
this scene this reminds me a lot of um now i haven't worked with docker but um i have worked a, a bit in the past with um whole images and virtual machines and it, it's a little bit like that uh except yeah. that with a virtual machine uh you change the state of your image that you've downloaded in it and it you retain all those changes yeah yeah yeah, the, the only thing with virtual machines is um, they're much bigger. You know, they take a lot yeah. longer to start up and so on. Uh, and you sort of have licensing issues as well sometimes. Uh, so, who's, so Harry, what's this Docker file you put in? This is the thing I was trying to get to run. It's a um, wheat ear counter. So you take a picture of um, wheat and it tells you how many ears of wheat there are in the picture, which is really useful for what I'm trying to do at the moment. But I cannot get it to run. Um, Does it build the image and then? Yeah, I think so. And then when it comes to run, it tells me that I think there's a um, requirements issue. Uh, Hang on, I've got a um, GitHub for you. So it's all in this GitHub. And I have played about with the um, models that are needed. It tells you you need to go and make your own, the two models. Yeah. Uh, segmentation and regression models. So I've played around with that and I have them somewhere. I don't know if it'll let me in the chat. So what, what? Um... <laughs> Oh, right. So it's got, they've told you sort of how, or how to install it into yeah. Docker and whatnot. Oh, okay. Oh, interesting. I might have a play with that later then. Just see. Yeah. But, no, but cool. have you, so what have you, um, there's no model. Is there a model in here or are you? Yeah, I'm just, I, they, but they should bounce through in a zip file now into the chat. So you can steal both of them and play with them. Those are the two models that I've tinkered around with a bit. I'm very jealous that you're able to put files into the chat. I'm not, yeah. <laughs> not sure what's going on with that. I couldn't put your PowerPoint file in there either. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to do with this uh, with this model, Harry? And and what is the advantage of Docker for your application rather than just in collab or uh, something else. So I, this is this is sort of where my failings are really at the moment. I think is that I don't know how to deploy any of this and then make it scalable and then be able to deploy it into a proper app. No idea how to do any of that. Um, so this is just me trying to find an easy way because I've got a couple of trial plots I have to go and have a look at, and I don't really want to be on my hands and knees counting, counting. Um, heads of wheat, to be honest. So if I can take a picture and do it. And the idea to scale it up is that a lot of our agronomists have um, drones anyway. So if they can fly a drone across and take images that are going to be the say, uh, say every image is a two meter square, we can quite easily chuck them, iterate it through something like this to be able to count the total, mm. is my thoughts. Mm. So, you know, the agronomist isn't then messing about taking ages to to count the whole trial plot if that's what's necessary. Um, and you can just put the drone images at the end of the day into this and it should do a count for it. I don't know how easy that's going to be. I don't know how to actually do that yet, but that's sort of what I'm working on at the moment. Yeah. It's the sort of thing that just in plain Python, if you had a, you know, a model and you, you could just sort of iterate through a folder you know put all your images in one folder uh go through each image so, you know t counting yes yeah. totalizing giving an output yeah absolutely yeah, you could uh, exactly do that, that. But, yeah it's, it's the containerization which is more difficult than writing the application in that case i think the, the model that i've trained on those images from the global wheat detection competition um, oh. with a few more so the two models should have turned up in a zip file in the chat there. Yeah, seeing them there now, yeah. Whether I've saved them correctly, et cetera, et cetera. Probably not because I'm, well, I think they are. They, they slot in and it seems to read them. There's just a, there's a 
file version issue whenever I try to run it. Um. We competed. Uh, we had a team here at Harper in the Global Wheat Detection Challenge. Oh, really? How did you go? We we did middling. You know, we did we didn't win it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's an amazing data set, and um, I, w I guess I was thinking that maybe they've made some progress in the last three years. There might, there might even be a publication. It's the first time I've really thought about it since then. Well, I think some of the stuff they based it on the um, crowd counting and created Im image density maps behind it was a better way of doing it, um, uh, and without using bounding boxes, just using pixels mm. as, a, as, a, as, a, as a marker. I don't know. I don't know is my answer. I don't know. Mm. I'm just trying to get this to work so I can <laughs> save myself time, but it needs to be taking me more time than it will save me. I might as well be on my hands and knees at this point. <laughs> mm. Um. Okay. We're at right up straight at five o'clock. I think that was a great intro to Doctor Docker. Uh, Matt, thank you. I'm inspired to play with it, and I'll I'll work through your powerpoints and. Um, Anybody have any other final questions? Request for a uh, follow-up from Matt with a working DSAT and R installation. <laughs> I see a lot of hands going up for that. <laughs> yes, please, Matt. <laughs> Amy, you have some R code questions, sure. You can do that for a few minutes if anybody wants to stick around. Yeah. You want to stop the recording, Ed? Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. That was yeah, excellent and weirdly coincidental. Mm, yeah.